everyone, it's Dr. Rick, and today's unboxing is going to be on Truvani, it's a protein supplement. And I did get this from my friends at Fruitful Yield to sample and unbox. So we're going to do that now. I just finished a workout. And the other part of this unboxing is also going to be on forgiving me because I was a little bit too rough with one of my clients. or my patients tonight, I had a consult with one of my 69-year-old men who was coming to see me for uh, just fine-tuning his thyroid disease. And how many? One scoop is equal to 20 grams protein. I'm going to push this a little bit with one and a half scoops. Hopefully it doesn't change the uh, consistency too much. So this is Trevani, comes with its own scooper, uh, Ziploc pouch. I will probably use an empty bottle of my favorite and dump it in there because it, it's just too difficult to keep on opening the Ziploc. And so let me just taste this real quick and I'll uh, give you my unboxing face. It's actually 8.30. I don't usually work out in the evening, but I was busy today with my clinic, so I only had time to work out tonight. Uh, hopefully it doesn't interfere with my sleep, but uh, I think this is just enough with my shaker. So should be enough. Let's taste this thing. Truvani, better be good. Not bad. I, I put in one and a half scoops, so that's a little bit more than usual. That's probably ballparking 25 to 30 grams of protein. And it's plant-based. Tastes pretty good. So taste is good. Is there any sugar in this? So uh, total sugar is two grams. It doesn't say what the... I'll have to read it later, but... Uh, and zero added sugar. There must be something that's flavoring this because it tastes pretty good. So that is a nutrition label and it's organic. So uh, when you exercise, I don't care what age you are, uh, it's important to throw resistance in with your cardiovascular fitness training. A lot of people that I ask that come to see me from the ages of 40 on up to 70, when I ask about exercise, they usually say I walk or I run. Now, walking to me doesn't count. I'm sorry. If I'm going to be a coach, I'm going to tell you that walking should be a baseline for everybody, especially if you're coming back from a hospitalization. If you're telling me that walking is the height of your exercise, we got a problem because that's not going to get you anywhere. I mean, it'll get you somewhere at distance, but if you're just taking a walk around the block uh, leisurely or even power walking, I think that's entry level. So please, uh, my suggestion is if you're going to hire me as a coach for lifestyle change, or if you're going to hire a tutor, to get better grades. Do you want to pay the tutor all that money to get C's or do you want to pay the tutor as best as you can to get A's? Do you want to tell the coach or do you want to pay the coach for just getting by or do you want to get something out of your productivity with and your time with the coach? The objective I would say up until the age of 70 is that you have to try to maximize every time, every year, every workout. Now I don't expect everybody to do resistance training all the time. I think that's very arduous. Unless you have been brought up in that fashion, you probably won't like it. But if you do cardiovascular fitness, cool. If you don't do resistance, you have to add a sprinkle of resistance in to your cardiovascular fitness. If you do resistance already, cooler, but do balance it out with cardiovascular, maybe yoga, stretching. I think it's, it's always important to have a well-balanced exercise routine and avoid injury. Now, if you do push the resistance. I think resistance does work in a couple ways to benefit number one metabolism to chew up cholesterol to chew up number two glucose. Cholesterol leads to heart disease. Those of you get annual physicals you know doctors always check lipids and typically if you have an elevated lipid test they're going to tell you uh, try to cut back on your meat which doesn't really translate to elevated cholesterol but that's old school. Or they're going to tell you to stop eating eggs, which doesn't really translate to cholesterol, but that's old school. Now, uh, the work of Dean Ornish 
show that people with heart disease, if you took their diet and you changed it into a vegan low fat diet, you would be able to lower or shrink the plaques that were in the blood vessels of the heart. Now that doesn't necessarily extrapolate to the fact that vegans don't have heart disease. That just means that if you have massive disease, five vessel disease, and you change to a plant-based diet, you should be able to reverse the disease if you follow Ornish's protocol. But Ornish's protocol isn't just vegan low fat, it's also group therapy, it's yoga, it's exercise, and it's proper sleep. So it's a lifestyle. And uh, critiques to the Ornish uh, protocol have said that, well, you don't know if it's the diet or if it's the exercise, they, they don't know. And that's fair. But the idea would be if you are not at the massive five vessel disease and you're just building up and you have your visits annually and your cholesterol is creeping up every decade, you probably should be doing something about it. And what should you be doing? Things that increase metabolism. And certainly cardiovascular fitness uh, does uh, push metabolism a little bit, but I think that resistance exercise and building muscle pushes metabolism faster. So let me explain. Uh, overall, the 30,000 foot view is that if you do cardiovascular fitness, as long as you're not an ultra marathoner, I think that there is some beauty in uh, ultra marathons, in, in century rides, uh, but I think the payback is that with that distance and the time that you put into that kind of training, you're gonna be taken away from your family because it's a lot of time to train with that kind of intensity and to try to register a personal record. And it also is a lot of friction to your joints, specifically knees, hips, and ankles. So you have to be careful. Swimming, a lot of friction to your shoulders. So with cardiovascular fitness, uh, you'll find that, uh, my suggestion is if that's all you do, okay, but you'll have to keep on pushing so that your personal record gets shorter and shorter and shorter, or, or your distance continues to increase. Something that you have to, as your coach, I had to push you to strive to improving every year because, and that's why I put a top out at 70, because I expect that 70 metabolism and age will probably predispose you to other things where we have to pull back a little bit and not expect those gains anymore up until the age of 70. And that doesn't mean all 70 year olds, it, it's a case by case basis, but up until the age of 70, kick some ass. And if you're gonna be hiring me, and you're 69, I will still push you. Again, I, my 69 year old guy, David, I, I think I was pushing him too hard, saying that you probably need to put on something different as far as exercise, because you haven't necessarily increased your personal records, you haven't increased your lift, you haven't increased your strength, and you haven't increased your muscle mass or decreased your fat mass. And he told me that he used to get measured with fat calipers all the time. And that's fair. There's uh, ways to measure uh, lean mass and fat composition. And that's a, a nice metric to see if you're actually improving or, or if your exercise is working for you. If the program that you're going through is serving you, then I believe every year you should see an increase in power, an increase in strength, an increase in endurance, something of an increase in muscle size or and a decrease in waist size or fat mass. Now, sometimes if you're obese, morbidly obese or have a very high BMI, it's sometimes difficult to measure fat mass change, but there are ways to do it. Uh, fat calipers, uh, they do have some error associated with them, but I think if that's the only thing you have, then if you stay with the same trainer or the same coach, to measure the same amount in the same spots. I think that's fair to move forward and, and get measurements as you go and compare and then determine whether you are making headway or not. Now there's, if you have that problem where you are, have a high BMI or you're morbidly obese, there is something called a DEXA scan, D-E-X-A. DEXA scans are typically what we use for osteoporosis screening. And DEXA scans look at bone and bone thickness. But if you change the computer and the algorithm in the computer, you can actually measure fat mass and muscle mass. There is a DEXA scan locally, and it's not too expensive. It's uh, 50 to 75 bucks, depending on if you have a Groupon coupon.
but I had one in the beginning of summer and I had one again now. And honestly, the I could tell that, so I haven't had this kind of, uh, I haven't been this lean in a long time. And uh, I, I was kind of, when I was in my bodybuilding stages, I was told my body mass, or at least my fat mass was probably three to 5%. And right now I'm probably at about, my guesstimate is 7%. Five to seven percent, depending on the day and how dehydrated I am. Now that's a guesstimate. Now when I got my DEXA scan, it was kind of high, and I was I, I honor the results that they got, very exact. But again, it's okay if they were if the measurements were higher than my expectations. It's okay because if I get another measure and I get another measure, it still shows that I'm on my way down, which is ultimately what I want to see a decrease in fat mass. And I, I obviously I noticed it already, but uh, if I was obese and I didn't notice it or it was too hard to tell, then, and I was getting frustrated that, hey, nothing's happening here, my coach. What are you making me do all this stuff for? Why am I starving? Why am I taking all this protein? Why am I cutting out carbohydrates? Why am I doing intermittent fasting? Why am I sweating my nuts off? And, and sometimes if you just have a metric whether it's fat calipers, a DEXA scan, dunk tank, bod pod. If you just have a metric that you do before and then you do intermittently, you'll be able to answer that question and hopefully show that what you're doing is appropriate. Now, you're going to have feedback from your coach or your physical therapist to give you the feedback that says that you are improving, whether it's because your form is improving or you're playing around and pushing more weight or your personal, your intervals in a hundred yard uh, dash or a quarter mile run are shortening. When I train people, I'll just tell them go and they won't keep count of the movements I'm telling them to go through. I'll keep count, but I'll time them. And sometimes they just say, I'm totally winded, but I'll tell them that you just got 15 more than last week and 20 more than when we started. Unbeknownst to them, I push as hard as possible because I want them to be successful. The more that they tolerate with my motivational pushing, the more that they'll realize that the investment is being paid off. And once they see that, they'll dive in deeper and harder. So that's what the, the motivation always is important to support. Because if you don't have the motivation and you're just cranking out the hours, you're sweating, you're starving yourself, eventually something is going to come up like wintertime, bills, taxes, COVID, who knows what's going to happen with COVID, shelter in place, and something's going to take the place of your motivation. And then you're going to say, I don't have to work out. Oh, I'm hungry. I'm starving. Screw the gill. So I think it's important to know the motivation. It's important for your coach to figure out, okay, when is this guy going to tap out? Is that, am I pushing him too hard? So uh, that's where it goes back to me trying to explain to my patient. And he had a good point too, because my visits are all virtual at this point until we figure out the COVID thing and uh, the Delta variant and the booster being mandatory or who knows what with OSHA. He said, well, uh, you, you've told me that I'm not making any gains and maybe I'm, I should be working out harder, but how do you know when you haven't actually seen me or measured me? And he had a good point because I haven't measured him, but just by the two hours I spent on the phone with Q and A and getting his history and getting his feel for what he's doing with endurance, guarantee you that when I, if I meet him in person, it'll be what I usually expect, a 60 to 70 year old that does do what he's supposed to do at the gym, but just gets by. And, and here's the thing. Uh, guys are, are fine with regimented activities and routines at the gym. They'll go at, like robotically and do the usual thing. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they'll do one thing. And then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, do another thing. And they'll be very methodical with that. But in some cases, they'll not push themselves hard because of the fact that they're solo and they don't want to, and that's me too. Uh, you don't want to really work out with that many people. You don't want to be in tight situations, especially with COVID. You can get in and out really quick and get your workout done. 
and that's cool about being solo or by yourself, but also you might not be motivated to push hard. That last set will be, oh, I'm shaky, I quit. Versus having friends around saying, go, 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 one more set. And that's the beauty of working out with other people. So, and that is usually what I see with my 60 to 70 year olds. They usually tap out or they'll just fly by doing some uh, average perceived exertion, you know, uh, 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 10 with a bench press or uh, five with a pull down. And, and that's usually all they'll do. When in actuality, the idea would be if you hit that last repetition, the beauty will come when you squeeze out another and, and you would think you're exhausted and you can't do one more, but there's ways to do things called negatives where you just get to, you get assistance and you cheat and you hold to the maximum position and then you slowly let go in an eccentric fashion. So that actually taxes the muscle past the point of where you left off. If you tap out and you just got enough to get winded but not push muscle, muscle will not grow. Again, the objective is longevity here. I don't want everybody bulky. I don't want everybody bodybuilder size. I, I'd like to get that way because if I can pad enough muscle before I turn 70, I can cruise from 70 to 80 and not even exercise and get, I can wither away. Now, I don't have to be massive like The Rock, but I, I do believe that the more muscle you carry, the more metabolism you can generate to burn cal calories, burn cholesterol, burn glucose, beat obesity, beat lipids, and cholesterol and heart attack, and also beat diabetes. So uh, that's a great all-around benefit. There's data that shows that longevity is translated into how fast you can get up from the ground if you fall, especially if you're 60 to 70, and also jump height. So what do those two, two, two things have in common? Muscle and power. You don't have to have explosive power to get off the ground, but those two things, if you see, and those are, that's just a small study, there's other things that also give you high possibilities for longevity, like slow heart rate, low blood pressure. But how do you do that? That's with cardiovascular fitness. So as I mentioned before, cardiovascular fitness is good, but because of what I see in the office, which is usually high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, obesity, an easier approach would be resistance, honestly. Now, the problem is resistance, um, you, you have to have some kind of introduction. And if you are in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, you probably had the introduction in gym class. But if you didn't participate in gym class or you're younger than that, I don't know what they do in gym class nowadays. They're probably doing a little bit of running, a little bit of calisthenics and organized sports. But I, I think that the gym class uh, routine, uh, the phys ed teacher is less involved with their students nowadays because there's no time. You had to fill in other things, uh, take the place of gym class, uh, like computer science and other ethics. So I, I think that we've uh, poo-pooed gym class and we've become sedentary. So the idea would be when those, when the millennials or younger, the ex-gens grow up and they haven't even tasted exercise, what are they supposed to do? Watch a video. That's wrought with error. You can watch a video and figure out how to do Olympic lifting or bicep curls but you can also watch a video and figure out how to do it the wrong way. So it depends on what video you're watching. You can also watch a video by Jack Nicholas and learn how to golf, but you will never golf as good as him. Watch a video with Michael Jordan, you will never throw and play basketball as well as Michael Jordan. But the idea is, will you be able to express it in the best form? And, and no, you will have to have a coach. And that's why you should hire or look for somebody to train you. If you can't, if you feel uncomfortable with going to a gym, that's fair. Uh, I, I think that if you're vaccinated or if you have natural immunity, then you should be protected because going to the gym is a risk because you're going to be mingling with other people that have touched equipment. But I always use a mask and gloves when I work out and I wipe down equipment. And again, I'm away from everybody. The risk that you take with going out to public places is also negated because you are exercising. Exercising decreases comorbid factors. The lower your comorbid factors, the better your outcome will be in case you do get exposed to COVID. Bottom line is that exercise is important. I do challenge anybody to exercise and keep on gaining 
either strength, power, PRs, uh, decreasing time, increasing distance, whatever it is, don't be content with just staying at one level through a whole decade. Try to keep on moving forward. Squeeze out an extra thousandth of a second. David, I'm sorry I picked on you so much, but hey, listen, you hired me. If you're going to hire me, I'm going to push. And I don't mean to push so hard, but we'll meet in April. I told David I'd meet him in April. I'll probably send him to get that DEXA scan now. I will push protein. So all my guys that are 50 years of age and above and gals, you guys especially need protein. So this is one of the reasons why I went from vegan to carnivore. I know it's a totally 180 degree shift, but uh, when I was vegan, I loved it. It was cool. It was novel. I did it for three years. I, it initiated, I was already pescatarian, but it initiated when Bob, one of my patients at Advocate, had a heart attack in the office. It was a heart attack that evolved. So I said, you know what, Bob? You live through this heart attack. We're going to do the Ornish together. I'm not sure Bob's how Bob is now. I think he's doing great. I kept up with the Ornish. Uh, he didn't. And I, I thought it was great, but I found it very difficult. Number one, I was getting injured all the time. So I had to adjust my protein. And that's where I went with the plant-based protein while I was in the vegan practice. After that, it was just very arduous to continue pushing protein. The, the easiest way to remember this is if you want to hit max, one gram per pound should be what you're looking for daily. If I'm 140 pounds, I got to get 140 grams of protein in per day. And yes, that's a lot. I don't think the data says anything bad about kidneys as far as cleaving off nitrogen and destroying kidneys. I don't see anything like that, but that is a lot of work. That's almost, and especially I'm an intermittent faster. I don't eat until 1130, sometimes 12. But if I only have a window of between 12 and seven to eat, I've got to be eating all the time and it has to be high protein. There's no room for carbohydrate. And I honestly don't eat that much carbohydrate anymore. So that's arduous. And uh, back then it was just so hard. Now that I switched over to being carnivore, and I, I don't know if I'll keep this up, but um, now that I've switched over to being carnivore, it's a lot easier because all I do is chop down on, on meat eggs, fish, and I get the protein sources in addition to putting more in, but uh, this is the best I have been in addition to a couple other things that I have done, and I'll mention them in the next video, to get me to where I want to get to. I'm going to be turning 60 in August in 2022, so that, that's one of the hallmarks. I wanted to be able to get to Everest Base Camp. Uh, I will probably not do it exactly on my birthday. I'll probably go to Colorado. So anybody that wants to go to Colorado with me, start training now because I'm going to be picking one of the hardest 14 years in Colorado. I took three guys. Uh, check out my videos on uh, Mount Evans and Gray's Peak. Uh, but uh, we'll be hitting again in August a uh, couple of 14 years again. So it'll be fun. And we're going to be taking families this time. The families won't go to the 14 years. They'll stay on base camp. But I'll be taking a couple people up. Please start training with me. Don't be scared of this COVID thing. You should be more scared of the diseases that are coming at you now. Heart disease still kills more every year and it has been killing in the last couple, 10 years than COVID has killed yet. Oh, so everybody forgets about the amount of deaths per year of heart attack or caused by heart attack. And it's astounding, but talk about COVID and it gets in the limelight and say, oh, everybody's dying. Well, the only thing we're doing is cholesterol centric treatment I'm not doing anything else and and that's another problem so this is so politicized uh, whether it's going to be heart attack or covid i guess we can't avoid that but you guys can empower yourselves to lead a healthy life be the best you can be don't wait until the last minute because if you wait until the last minute then you have to go aggressive ornish or bypass or stent and we can always kind of, I can take you over once the specialists are finished with you, but I'd rather take care of you moving forward so you don't have to go to a specialist or have the procedures done, but that's a tough sell. When somebody's kind of feeling healthy at a younger age, and I say, listen, this is coming, so I would do this, 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 and this now. Uh, it's kind of tough for somebody to comprehend that. A mom texted me and said, what should I give my son? He's in college now. I want him to work on his immunity. So immediately I thought I'm going to give him what the FLCCC suggests, which is quercetin, vitamin D, zinc, vitamin C, aspirin, maybe not aspirin, uh, and, and melatonin. 
So that's uh, immediately that's that's six different things in aspirin, and that's going to be a lot to ask for a a twenty year old or a teenager. But that's what I would do for immunity, and I'd get them exercising. But but that again is going to be a tough sell. So living by example, if you exercise, if you eat right, uh, then if somebody asks you, give them all you got, uh, encourage them, show them what you do. If they don't ask you, make it interesting, uh, show them your guns, uh, show them what you're doing, show them up, tell them how old you are. I love when I tell people I'm going to be 60 next year. And they're like, what? I invest in this just as much as I invest in the knowledge that I'm trying to learn with taking care of my patients. And I think it serves me, it's fun, and it serves my patients. I have to live by example, but there's a lot of great things uh, that you can take advantage of. Just have to slow down and realize what's not serving you and what's available to you. And you have to set some goals. Uh, don't wait till the last minute and just try to stay healthy. Make some healthy choices. What If, you, if it comes down to it, it's either going to be something that you eat or something that you do harms you or helps you. And that's the bottom line. So make it help. Thanks for watching up to this point. Don't forget to subscribe to me on my YouTube channel and check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. See you in the next video.